Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome to the Nozo. Yes, this is a place for non-stop learning fun. I am Janet. I am Ch -ch 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 Charlie. Uh, where's Mara? Oh, Mara! Oh, 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 oh I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm late. I, I used a different route to, to get here. Uh, oh. I'm sorry, and I got lost. Sorry, Maya, but hey, I think you're just in luck because today's episode might just help you find your way back home. Exactly. So, why don't we get straight to it? Let's go into the chill out zone and meet our friends. Hey, hey, wait for me. Wait, wait for. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. All right, now, to start us off, why don't we say a big hello to everyone who's watching us at home? Hello. hello. Good to have you with us. Now, who can tell us what today's topic is? It is about position and direction. Ah, I love that. Excellent. Now, what are the buzzwords? Over. Near. Behind. Outside. Now, for you watching us at home, remember to keep your eyes and your ears open for these words throughout today's adventures. Right now, it's time for us to see what our new friends are up to. It's time for... Please let me in, Mr. Zippo. I've got something I want to share. Do you think you're sweet? Yeah. Hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? There is only one way to find out what Theo wants to share with us. Are you ready? Yeah! Hello! Wait, Theo! You're late, which means you have to spell today's... Password! Position. P-O-S-I-T-E-O-N. Wrong! Oh, wait, it's P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. Yeah! Hi, I'm so excited. I wanted to show you this. Wow, what's that? A treasure map. My grandfather gave it to me. He said he'd always looked for a treasure around these parts, but never found it. Look, just forget about the treasure. But why? We could be rich. Riches are not everything. Now, you see, a long, long time ago, they used to call me Captain Zip. And I was in search of that very treasure. And I travel high seas and to the lowest valleys you've ever seen. Until I finally arrived here. Then what happened, Mr. Zippo? Oh, look, it, it's not worth it. Just, just give up the chase. All the treasures you're looking for do not exist in one hidden spot. But we could be really close to the treasure. Imagine all the gold we could find. Yeah, and by the looks of this map, I think we're close. Here, doesn't this look like Makutano town? You're right, Anne-Marie. This does look like the marketplace. Let's go check it out. Hey! Don't say I didn't warn you. Don't worry, Mr. Zippo. When we get rich, we'll share some of our treasure with you. Okay, where do we begin? Look at this, it looks like the milk bar. Maybe we should look for a clue over there. Mr. Speedy, Mr. Speedy. Well, good people, how can I help you? Mr. Speedy, have you ever seen anything strange outside here? What do you mean? Uh, something old. Like it used to belong here a long time ago. Could you be talking about this? Just an old rug uh, that I use as a duster. That's a clue. Oh, please help us with that old rug. Please, please Mr. Sweetie. Well, all right, you can have it. Thank you. Oh. 
too. When you're looking for a treasure, it could be so exciting. I hope we're getting close because my feet are getting tired. Hmm, according to this map, there should be another clue near here somewhere. Let's check behind that tree. Can you see anything? There's nothing. Who knew looking for a treasure could be so hard? Wait a minute, let's look at that map again. Can you tell anything? By the looks of it, we should go beyond this point to near the playhouse. What? We still have to search. Don't get tired, Daphne. Just think of all the money we could make. Okay, let's go. I really hope we find that treasure today. It's getting late and we can't be outside too long. Maybe we missed something. Theo, did your grandfather tell you anything about the map? Just that he had tried looking for the treasure in the past. He's now old and gave up a long time ago. Hey, what's that? I got it. The other piece of the map. Let's put it together. What does this say? Across the journey, you've discovered your treasure. There is no gold. Ah! What? I don't understand. Did we miss something? Maybe we missed a clue. No, we have it all. So where's the treasure? Was this all a joke? Theo, what is the meaning of this? <laughs> this map is a lie. Theo, did you put all these clothes for us to waste time on? What? Theo, playing on us a joke like this isn't funny. But I promise I wasn't lying. You are you lying. lying. Hey, silence at once. Okay, come on in and tell me what the matter is. Mr. Zippo, you lied to us. I didn't. Then why didn't we find any treasure? I don't know. We did everything and found all the clues to the joint map. Hmm. Now, let me have a look. Aha! Across your journey, you have discovered your treasure. There is no gold? Do you know if it means anything? Hmm. So, after all this, this is what it's all about. Oh, well, congratulations, you have discovered the treasure. What are you talking about? There's nothing we have got. No silver. Or gold. Not even a treasure chest filled with ancient books. I see. But you have missed the truest treasure in the world. What's that? True friendship. Now, you see, nothing can ever replace the true value of friends like Theo, who came in here with a treasure map so that you could all join in the spoils. Now, the adventure you went to should be an experience to value because you went high and low searching for something that you already had all along. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Theo. Sorry. Thanks, Mr. Zippo. But still, I sure wish we'd find something more. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, hold on. Just hold on. Aha! How about we share in on this one? From Playhouse, this is Queasy Quiz. What was Theo given by his grandfather? A treasure map. My grandfather gave it to me. What was the password to the Playhouse today? Position. P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. What is the greatest treasure of all? True friendship. 
Wow, Quizzy is so clever, the way he answered all of those questions. Did you answer all of Quizzy's questions? Yes! Yeah! Awesome, we hope you at home too had fun answering those questions. Mm, I did, I did. And I did not even break a sweat. And that's how cool I am. Oh, Marara is so cool. But actually, when you think about it, I know something else that's really cool. Oh! <laughs> it's time for... Cool Words! Cool Words, Cool Cool Words. Hello everyone and welcome to Cool Words. Hello, Teacher Pendo! How are you today, Teacher Pendo? What? Are you looking for something? Uh, I'm fine, thank you, Marara. And yes, I'm looking for something. Has anyone seen my ruler? Yes, Simon? It's on the blackboard. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Simon. Okay, today we shall be looking at how to describe where things are placed in position. Now, I shall be asking where questions and you will give answers to these questions by first looking around to see where the objects are placed. Now, do you all understand? Yes! yes. Okay, look at where I have placed my ruler. Where is my ruler now? Yes, Joyce? It is on the table. Correct. Now, if you look around you, there are different objects placed at various places in our classroom. I am giving you a few seconds to look around and then think about where the objects are. Are we all ready? Yes! Good. Let's look around the classroom. Look around everywhere. There are so many objects around. Look around. Look at the blackboard at my beautiful walls. Where are all these objects placed? So where is the duster? Yes, Ida? The duster is behind Marara. Correct. Now where is the comb? Yes, Ryan? The comb is under the chair. Excellent. Now look at the calendar. Where is the calendar? Well, uh, did you end Yes, Marara. Uh, the calendar is near the sign. Aha, uh -huh, very good. But, yes, the calendar is right wait, there. But wait, wait, wait. Yes. Can I ask you a question, Chicha Pendo? Go right ahead. Where is the bag? Aha, uh -huh. the bag is in front of the table. Well done, Marara. And I hope you at home manage to find the objects with the rest of the studio class. Now let's look at the board, everyone. Now let's read these two words out loud. Where is? Very good. Now let's look at the next word and read it out loud together. Where's? Aha. Uh -huh. Now who can tell me the difference between these two words? Yes, Simon. They both mean the same, but the first one is two words, while the second one is one word. That's correct. Now, the second one is actually the short form of the first one, where is. We say where's when we speak, but both forms of the words can be used when we are writing. Now, it is important to note that there is an apostrophe between the E and the S. Do you all understand? Yes! Very good. Now be sure to join us later on for more cool words. Right now though, it's time to take another road trip with my speedy. It's time for Out There. Everyone loves playing. Me too! Apart from having lots of fun as we are playing our favorite games, did you know that we tend to learn very important abilities that help us in our lives as we grow up? Sometimes we have to keep the scores. Sometimes we have to learn to work as a team. And sometimes we have to settle our disagreements. Whether we are playing hide and seek or any indoor game, one thing for sure is that we get to make and meet new friends every now and then. That's why my friends and I are going to explore a new game called golf. Come on, come with us and let's learn together. To play golf, one needs some special equipment. That is, a club and some balls. Hey, look! <laughs> These are very colorful balls. 
we have our clubs now. The pencil, the balls, and the scorecard. So, let's go golfing. Abakol tells us that this is a game he has so much passion for. And he is ready to teach us more about this not so common game. But first, we have to do some practice here. Before we begin playing, we need to write our names first on the scorecard. But how does one keep score of this game? Scoring in golf is sometimes a mystery to those unfamiliar with the sport because in golf, unlike most other sports and games, it is the person with the lowest score who wins. I am told that playing golf is not only lots of fun, but also provides kids with critical skills that help them throughout their lives. For example, honesty. Golf is a game that is self-policed, with players responsible for knowing the rules and applying them fairly to themselves. On the course, only you, the player, knows the position of your ball and what is your score for the round. The scoring of golf is easy and simple to understand. This is why, here, every player has six chances to score. After each hole, count the number of strokes it took to get the ball in the hole. A stroke is any swing where the intention is to hit the ball, even if the ball is missed. At the end of each hole, add up your strokes for that hole and write the number down on the official scorecard. Each and every golfer has the responsibility to ensure they have recorded properly their golf score. Hmm, this is a tricky one. How do you get the ball to go in one specific direction and into the hole? Seems to be so far away. First, your standing position is very important. You start with your feet together to the side of the golf ball, spread legs to shoulder width, keeping the ball in the middle of the stance. Move the club into position behind the ball. Then hit the golf ball, keeping your arms straight. For safety, onlookers and other standby players are not supposed to stand near or behind the player, but on the sides. See, this can be so much fun, <laughs> especially when one finally gets to school. Oh. Unlike some other sports, golf is a sport that doesn't encourage yelling, especially when people are hitting near you. Okay, this should be easy now. Let me try it. Ah. Uh -huh. That did not go so well. With golf, it is definitely a game that requires practice and patience as the game continues even after a bad shot. Here we learn that one bad shot won't make or break a round. Instead, you try with the next shot to improve your position and keep trying until you make it to the hole. This is definitely one fun game. Learning something new can be hard. But today, I have learned that patience is important. So don't give up, take your time and you will do it. Bye for now. See you soon. It is so much fun hanging out with my speedy. Oh, yeah. Janet, I hope you enjoyed it too. Yes, I did, Mara. But right now, it's time for you to take us some fun place too. Just don't take us towards the wrong direction. Ah, don't worry. I am an expert at counting. <laughs> well, actually, I will not argue with that. And for you at home, don't be left behind. Make sure you join in. It's time for our number game. Yeah! All right, well, 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's time to dive into the number pool and have fun with the numbers. Yes, welcome number team. Now today we're going to be dealing with subtraction. That is right. Now team, are you ready? Yes! All right, so what you have to do is roll the dice. And then you must subtract the two numbers that are on the top of the dice. In this case, it would be seven minus three, which is four. Then run to the number pool and find the answer hidden amongst the balls. Once you find it, give that to Janet. Now, after your turn, you have to run back to the number team, tag the next team member who will go up to Charlie so that they can roll the dice. Now, remember, you only have 30 seconds to roll the dice, find the solution in the number pool, and give the solution to Janet. Now, if you get all the subtractions correct, you can take away these fabulous books back to your school. And not forgetting that we have a very special prize for each one of you. Finally, team, I just have one more question for you. Are you ready? Yeah! All right, let's roll the die. That is right. Now, Joyce, you're up first. Come on. And Take Joyce is about to roll. Joyce is about to roll. And she rolls and... We have a 12 and a 1. What's 12 minus 1? 11. Go find 11 in the pool. Go find 11 in the pool. Find 11. 11. Take it to Janet. Take it to Janet. Take it to Janet. Tag the next person. All right. Ryan, it's your turn. Roll the dice. Ryan rolls and it's 7 and a 4. 7. What's 7 minus 4? 3. 3. 3. Go find 3 in the pool. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Your turn, roll the dice. Add the rolls, add it, sir. Uh, 10 and a three. Now, what is 10 minus three? Seven. 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 Well done, team. Now let's get to find out how you all did. I have to say that was very exciting seeing them exciting. jump into that number pool. Now, Joyce, you were up first. Joyce, you rolled 12 and 1. 12 take away 1 is what? 11. 11? Are you sure? Yes. Let's, Let's find out, and it's uh, oh! Oh! very well done, Joyce. On that first sum, second person to roll the dice was Ryan. Ryan, you rolled seven and four. I'm actually getting tired. <laughs> All right, seven <laughs> take away four is what? Seven first. minus four. Three. 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 Are yeah. you sure? Yes. Oh yes. yes! Oh! It's a three. It's a three. Okay, third person was Ida. Now, Ida, you rolled Ida. a 10 Ida. and 3. Seven. What's the answer? Seven. Seven. Are you Seven. sure? Yes! I don't know. Oh. 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 You guys are just the best. Let's see. Simon, 7 and 1. 7 take away 1 is what? Six. Six. Right. 6. Let's work with the 6. Let's work with the 6. Let's work with the 6. It's a six. Oh. It's a six. Oh. Thank you very much. You got all the sums correct. Let's clap for them, guys. Woo! Woo! <laughs> now, number team, you have been nothing short of fantastic, which can only mean one thing that you are going home with the books. Let's give them a round of applause. All right, and that is not
not all because this is the no zone and everybody wins. I have a special surprise for you. Come on, come and take your story book. Come on, come, come. Take story book. Yeah, that's yours. Julie, I don't know where to start. Oh my God, these kids, what did they have for breakfast? The way she dove into All that right. pool was fantastic. Okay, it's time for it. us to chill though. Yes, it's time for us to slow down. <laughs> Let's go and join up with our friend Dunia and see where she's taking us. It's our world. everyone, welcome back to Our World with me, Dunia. Today we are going to talk about hearing. Hearing is one of our five senses and we do it using our ears. If we do not want to hear, we can stop the sound waves and shut our ears with our hands. Have a go and see how well you can hear with your ears covered. So, what do we hear every day? The sheriff's office that 37-year-old Maurice Clemence is one Some of us like to listen to the news in the morning to find out about the weather or traffic or just what's happening. has an extensive violent criminal history in the state of Arkansas, including other... We use our ears to hear our alarms to wake us up quickly so we are not late for school or work. We use our ears to hear when someone is knocking on the door and wants to come in. We hear music that makes us happily dance around. It makes us feel good. But sometimes we don't want to hear music when it gets so loud, as it can damage our hearing. Oh, Cliff, you've scared all the girls away now. Turn it down. Some people love music so much, they take it with them everywhere. But you have to be very careful because if it's too loud, it will damage your ears and you will not be able to hear very well. Also, please. you cannot hear when please. someone is calling you. We can use our hearing to help us relax and enjoy stories or poems that are read to us. So they say, a jolly postman came one day from over the hills and far away with a letter for the three bears. I love hearing right. stories. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Bear and Baby Bear, I'm very sorry. We hear thunder that reminds us to shut the windows. We hear loud things, beautiful things, and annoying things. And all of these we do using our ears. Okay, so here are some questions to test how much you know about hearing. Do you know which animal is thought to have the best sense of hearing? A bat. Can fish hear? Fish do not have ears, but they can hear. They can sense pressure changes using the ridges on their skin. This is a cricket. Where are the ears of a cricket found? On their knees. Do snakes have ears? No, they do not but they can sense sound vibrations with their sensitive tongues. Do ostriches have ears? Yes, all birds have ears. 
Although they are difficult to see, as they are small holes in the side of their heads that are usually covered by feathers. Do elephants have big ears to help them hear better? No. Although they do help catch sounds, elephant ears are thought to be mostly to keep elephants cool in hot weather. That's why you sometimes see elephants flapping their ears. Did you know if you sit near a loudspeaker, the sound can damage your hearing in just seven and a half minutes? So stay clear of loud music and noises. See you next week for a new adventure. Bye! Dunia makes the world so beautiful, doesn't she? Yes! That is right. And for you watching us at home, we hope that you had as much fun as we did. Yes, we have a lot of fun coming up, but right now we have to go on a short break. Oh, great! Uh, let me go find a map. Wait, 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 wait. A map? What for? To find the shortest route home. <laughs> ah, Charlie. Okay, Mara, I get it. You are a clever lion, but don't be too long because we have to be back right here on the No Zone. Don't go away. Hello. Now, as you know, this is the No Zone. And as always, we have a lot of fun while we learn. Now, do you remember everything that you have been learning so far? If not, do not worry because we have something very special just for you. Now, we have a free, fun-packed booklet that comes with everything we have learned throughout Term 1. The question is, do you want one? And if you do want one, all you have to do is just ask your parents to help you send us a text with your name and address to 306. Zero six. six. So do not be left out. Come on, get on texting on three zero six zero six. Oh man, I missed a spot. What? Did... Uh, it's not clean. It's not clean. It's oh, not right. Clean. Wait, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. You missed another one. Where? Yeah, there, there, there. There? Yes, yeah, there, yeah, there. yeah. Um, Marara, I can see that you brought your map. Uh-huh. Um, you, you know, I... Do you need any help? No? Uh-uh. Okay, uh, I should probably tell you that you should have gotten a map of Nairobi, which is just a dot over here, and uh, your map is upside down. <laughs> oh, no! No wonder I can't see any place I know! <laughs> ah. Alright, come on, Mahara. Don't worry, we're going to help you after the show. Now, welcome back to the No Zone. Today's episode is all about position and direction. Now, who can tell us what the buzzwords are? Over. Near. Behind. Excellent! Now, remember to keep your eyes and your ears open for these words throughout our adventures. Charlie? Yep? Is it me or is it getting too hot in here? Can we do the rest of the show outside? Ooh, I, I don't think that's such a good idea, Maya, because it's actually hotter outside. But I think I know what else is hot. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Hot Numbers. Hello teacher Pando. It is nice to see you all here today and ready to learn. Today I would like us to look at subtraction. Subtraction? It sounds big. Not really Marara. It's the opposite of addition. In addition, we were adding numbers together. In subtraction, we take away numbers from each other. Now, I can see you're giving me a very puzzled look. Now, imagine that you have 
six pencils, okay? So I have six pencils here. Then I give away three pencils. One, two, three. So Marara, how many do I have left? I'll be left with three pencils if I give away three pencils. Very good. Now, I like the idea of using pencils to subtract. So I have 10 pencils here. Okay, so if I give away four pencils, so I take away four pencils, one, two, three, four. How many do I have left? Yes, Joy? You have six pencils. That is correct. Subtraction has three different names. You can say subtraction, take away, and minus. Now, if you hear any of these names, just know that they mean the same. Take away is easier to remember. Teacher Pendo? Yes, Marara? You remember you showed us two different ways of adding. Mm -hmm. Are there two methods for sums with subtraction? Yes, there are. Now, you can count up. For example, if I said... 11, take away 8. I can count up from 8. So let's count together. 9, Nine 10, 10 11. 11. Okay, so how many steps did we count up? Yes, Emmanuel? Three. Three steps, very good. Now, if that means 11, take away 8 is 3. Okay. Now we will do one more and then we will move on to the next method. So 16, take away 9. What's the answer? How do we go about this? Yes, Joy? We count from 10. We count from 10. Very good. So count for us. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so how many steps did we count up? Yes. Seven steps up. Aha, uh -huh, very good. So 16 take away 9 is 7. Well done. Now we will now continue doing subtraction or take away using the column method. Okay, now the same rule applies as the addition. You put your numbers in the correct column. So I have my first sum here. 59 take away 5. What I am going to do is first make sure that my numbers are in the correct columns. I have my ones there and I have my tens. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract my ones. So nine, take away five. Oh, oh, teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. That should be four. Mm -hmm, very good. And I have nothing to subtract here in the tens column. So five, take away zero, gives me five. So 59 take away five gives me 54. Okay, now let's try another one. 57, take away five. So what do we do first? Yes, Jasmine? Seven take away five is equal to two. Very good. So we subtract the ones column first. So seven minus five gives us two. What do we do next? Yes, Conrad? Five take away zero equals five. Uh -huh, very good. So in the tens column, five take away zero gives us five. Excellent. Let's uh, try and solve this next one. 46 take away four. Yes, Emmanuel? Six take away four equals two. Four take away zero equals four. Mm -hmm, very good. Which means our answer is? 42. Very good. So 46 minus 4 is 42. Okay, now our last sum here. Now this one is a bit tricky because we are going to be subtracting two digit numbers. So 35 take away 22. Now who would like to have a go? Oh, oh Mr. Pendo, can I try? Yeah, go right ahead. So I do the ones first. Mm -hmm. So that means 5 take away 2 is 3. And then I do the tens. Mm -hmm. So three minus two mm -hmm. is one. Mm -hmm. So the answer is 13, Teacher Pendo. Well done. So 35 minus 22 gives us 13. Now you first do the ones, okay? Five take away two, and then you tackle the tens. Three take away two. Well done, all of you. And how did you get on at home? Why don't you keep practicing? Unfortunately, we've run out of time for today's hot numbers. Be sure to join us next time for more fun with numbers. Right now, 
I hope you're feeling very creative. That's right. It's time for Creative Zone. Welcome to Creative Zone. Now, we had lots of fun rhyming words and learning about poetry last time. Now, I suggest that you go and grab your pens and papers once again because our friend Mwende is back to share with us that poetry flair. Welcome back, Mwende. Thank you. Well, <laughs> How are you nice doing? Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. Well, hello everyone. Last time we learned about what makes a poem and how to write a simple rhyming one. Well, I wrote one last time, but I, I, I'd love to share it with you, but the, the buzzwords are different. Well, that's okay, Marara. Today we'll use new ones. Today it's all about alternating rhymes. Oh, wow. Now that is so cool. So if it's about rhyming words, then we need to know the buzzwords. Well, the buzzwords are over, near, behind, below, and outside. So, Mwende, do you think that I should go and grab my pen and paper to write a new poem for these buzzwords? Yes, go ahead. All right, then. I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, <laughs> bye. All right, friends. Let us look for a word that rhymes with near, like fear or dear or clear. I like clear. Finding rhyming words can help you make a better poem and can sometimes inspire you. The next word I'm going to use is outside. Do you know any words that rhyme with outside? Pride or glide or side or bright. There are lots of simple great words that you can use. Why don't you try using some of them to write a simple poem? Now, poems can be written in a verse, or you can alternate the rhyme. For example, I like to play outside when the sky is very clear. I run from side to side. I run from there to here. You have the buzzword outside at the end of the first sentence, and then a rhyming word like side at the end of the third sentence, and have the buzzword clear at the end of the second sentence and here at the end of the last sentence. But not all poems rhyme. Some just have a collection of lines that flow and are used to build a story. This is called free verse, like this poem describing my kite. I fly like a bird, high in the sky, and I float like a feather, down, 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 till I reach the ground. Why don't you try writing a simple poem, whether it rhymes or it's free verse, and see how much fun you can have with it, and you'll soon see how easy it is. Now, don't forget about our competition. Send your poems to No Zone, Poetry Competition, Media Company, PO Box 215 Karen, Nairobi. The best three poems, as decided by us, will be read on air by one of our special friends. So make sure you have a go. But for now, that is all for today. Keep having fun with rhyming words. See you soon. Bye. Wow, such a creative piece. It's time for us to put our thinking caps on and to play with our words and our letters. It's time for Spell It. Animal, animal, chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, Meter. respect. Meter. deep, vegetable, work. 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 work, work. Welcome to Spell It. This is the place where we play with our words and our letters. Jasmine, Conrad, Joy, and Emmanuel, you are about to step out of the shadows and into the spotlight to compete for the title of today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Now, the winner of today's competition will win the school a No Zone Dictionary and a very special prize for themselves. That's right. Now, each contestant has just 25 seconds to spell correctly as many words as they can. If you would like a word repeated, simply say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Are the rules clear? Yes! All of today's words will be coming from our topic of what, Marara? Position and direction. Well, that means that we're going to get straight into it. So, Jasmine, it's your turn now. 
Come on down and step into the spotlight. Jasmine, your 25 seconds starts now. Up. U-P. Over. O-V-E-R. Near. N-E-R-A-R. Last. L-A-T. Inside. I N S, -S I N D across A uh, C. Oh, well, oh, done, well, well, done. well done, well done. Well done, Jasmine. Conrad, it's your turn now. Come on down and step into the spotlight. Did it, did it, did it. Did it, did it. Conrad, your twenty-five seconds starts now. Way. Repeat. Way. W A Y. Down. D O W W N. Here. H E A R. Which? W H I C H. Below. All right, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. All right, in the spirit of fun, we're going to keep going into it. Joy, you're up next. Come on down and step into the spotlight. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Joy, your 25 seconds starts now. Far. F A R. After. Repeat. After. A F T E R. End. E N D point P O I N T along A L O N G center. All right, Joy. Well done, Very Joy. Well done. Well done. Well done. Great. And finally, Emmanuel, it's your turn now. Come on down and step into the spotlight. <laughs> Emmanuel, your 25 seconds starts now. At. 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 T. Past. Repeat. Past. P. A. S. T. Left. L. E. F. T. Right. R. I. G. H. T. Before. B. E. F. O. R. E. Edge. Right. Well done, Emmanuel. Well, well, done. well done. Well done, all of you. Charlie, please reveal the results. Well, it was a very close one, and we saw some very good spelling. So, congratulations to all of you, but there is only one winner this time. I will start with Jasmine. You spelt three words correctly. Let's give a round of applause. Well done, Jasmine. Conrad, although you spelt the word H-E-A-R correctly, the word has to be related to position and direction. Still, you spelt three words correctly. Let's give him a round of applause. Joy, you ran out of time spelling the word center. However, you did spell one, two, three, four, five words correctly. <laughs> and finally, Emmanuel, although you spelled the word art correctly, A-R-T, the word we had asked has to be related to position and direction, which is A-T. Still, you managed to spell four words correctly. Which means that the winner of today's Nose on Spelling competition with five words spelled correctly is Joy! Joy, step forward. Congratulations, you are today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Here is your dictionary. Show everyone at home a big round of applause. Well 
congratulations, Joy, and to all of you. And of course, as you all know, this is the No Zone where everybody is a winner. So come on up and get a storybook, each one of you. Come, 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 come. Now that was an engaging round of Spell It. I think we're going to take a short break and go and visit up with Teacher Pendo and see what she has for us on Cool Words. Welcome back to Cool Words. Now on this side of the board, I have some words. Now let's read them out loud together. Over, near, behind, beyond, outside. Very good. These and other words we mentioned before are very important in helping us understand where objects are placed in positions. Now on the other side of the board, I have some sentences. Now your task is to fill in the gaps using the most suitable words from this list. Okay, and think of your choices carefully before giving your answer. Now, who would like to go first with the first sentence? The school bus stops at the street, dash our house. Yes, Simon? The school bus stops at the street, street near our house. Very good, near our house. Excellent. Next sentence, Juma likes to hide, dash the tree. Yes, Joyce? Behind the tree. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Behind the tree. Well done. Next one, we can hear footsteps, dash our classroom. Yes, Ida? We can hear footsteps outside our classroom. Very good. Outside our classroom. Excellent. And the next one, the road goes dash the hill. Yes, Ryan? The road goes beyond the hill. Well done. Beyond the hill. You're all doing so well. And finally, he walks dash the bridge to the other side of the farm. Marara, do you want to try this one? Ooh, 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 ooh. He walks over the bridge to the other side of the farm. Well said. He walks over the bridge to the other side of the farm. Excellent job, everyone. You all make it seem so easy. Why don't you all practice writing sentences using these words? Now, we're out of time for today's cool words. Be sure to join us next time for more. Right now, would you all like a story? Yes! Very good. It's time for Story Zone. story of Hare and the big ones. Enjoy! Today Hare wants to play. He goes to the home of Elephant and shouts, Elephant, come out and play with me! Elephant is angry. She says, you have bad manners. You should first greet me, then say, please come and play with me. Hare, I cannot play with you. You are too small and I will step on you. Hare says, so you think I am small? Yes, I am small, but I am also very strong. Elephant laughs. <laughs> Go away, little one. Leave me to have my food. Hare says, I know you are afraid of me. Elephant shouts, who is afraid? Get out of here before I step on you. Hare says, I will bring a rope. You will pull one end and I will pull the other. Then you will know I am strong. Elephant is angry. Do not shout at me. Go and bring the rope. When you come, I will show you I am strong. You will know I am elephant. Hare goes to hippopotamus. Hippo is swimming in the pond. Hare shouts, Hippy! Hippo cannot hear, so Hare shouts, Come out here, Hippy! I want to tell you something. Hippo says, You are bad here. You should say, Excuse me. Do not call me Hippy. Only my friends call me Hippy. Call me Hippopotamus. Hare says, I will call you Hippo or what you call yourself. One little bird told me that you're big, but you're not strong. 
That is why you hide in the water. Hippo is angry. He says, which little bird is telling those lies? That is not true. I am strong. Hare says, I just want to find out if you're strong. I will bring a rope. You will pull one end and I will pull the other end. Then I will know if you're strong. Hippo is very angry. He jumps out of the pond and a lot of water splashes on the pond. Bring the rope. You will see what I will do. I will pull you into this water. Just bring the rope. Hare says, I will bring the rope. Wait for me here. Hare goes home and gets a strong, long rope. He takes one end of the rope to Elephant and says, When you hear the sound of the drum, count one to ten, then start pulling. We shall pull until sunset. Hare takes the other end of the rope to Hippopotamus. Hippo comes out of the pond to get the rope. Hare says, Listen, Hippo, or what you call yourself. When you hear the sound of the drum, count one to ten, then start pulling. We shall pull until sunset. Hare is happy. He hides in a bush and plays the drum. Elephant counts one to ten and starts pulling. Hippo is a bit slow at counting. He has pulled a few steps, stops counting and starts pulling. Elephant pulls, Hippo pulls, they pull each other in the morning. Elephant pulls, Hippo pulls, they pull each other in the afternoon. In the evening, Elephant is hungry. In the evening, Hippo is hungry too. At sunset, they stop pulling. Elephant starts eating. Hippo goes into the pond to cool down. Hare goes to Elephant. My friend, you are strong. Elephant says, you are strong too. You may look small, but you are strong. You are now my friend. Hare goes to Hippo. My friend, you are strong. Hippo says, you are also strong. You may look small, but you are strong. You may call me Hippie. The end. From the story zone, this is Queasy Quiz. Why doesn't the elephant play with her? Hair, I cannot play with you. You are too small and I will step on you. Who told the hare that the hippo is not strong? One little bird told me that you're big, but you're not strong. For how long did the elephant and the hare pull the rope? They pull the rope until sunset. Wow, if only I could whiz through questions like Queasy. Well, don't worry about it, Marara. Think of it this way. Practice makes perfect. Now, to our friends, did you enjoy answering Queasy's questions? Yeah! Excellent. And for you at home, we hope that you had fun as well. Well, we are very happy that you had fun while you learned, and we're very grateful that you came through to help us with today's show. Oh. It's time already. I was hoping to stay here and not have to figure out the shortest way home. Ah, Marara, don't worry about it. We will help you with that. And for you watching us at home, make sure you join us again next week for more fun, more games, and more learning right here on The Nozo. Now, come on, everyone. Let's say goodbye. Bye! Bye.